Welcome to the Saved by Grace podcast, bringing you stories of hope, restoration, and God's faithful love. I'm your host, Sylvia Fuentes. Welcome to another episode of Saved by Grace. My name is Sylvia Puentes and I am your host. And today I'm so excited to have Jack Redmond back on the show. Jack is an entrepreneur. He is involved in leadership. He's an author, uh, co-author, writer. Um, Jack, welcome to Saved by Grace. So it's great to be here. Um, you know, it's, it's an honor. You know, I love... Uh, Anytime we can really share what God is doing and, and help people out, that's what we want to do. Yes, amen. So this has been a long time coming, and I said we welcome you back to Saved by Grace because you were on a previous episode um, with Akia, who you uh, co-authored, right, her her book. Yeah, you know, one of the things I do is I, is I help people write books and, you know, help them, you know, really walk out their calling for what God has for them. And so it's an amazing opportunity. Somebody like Akia is just, she's all over the place. She's super gifted, super talented. Um, so being able to help her, you know, put her story on paper and then she travels literally, you know, around the country, around the world, sharing what God did in her life. Uh, you know, so that's a great thing because you, you multiply what, God is doing in you and through you um, by partnering with other people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So speaking of books, your most recent book is titled God's Team. Mm -hmm. And I want you to share all about that because uh, it's it's a really interesting book. Um, I know it's it's God's Team, Unleashing the Power of the Church, which just the title alone is is powerful. Um, but before you get to that, why don't you take the, the listeners on your journey of how you came to know the Lord? Yeah, so I have one of the most interesting uh, uh, pathways to the Lord uh, that, I, that I know of. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, uh, but it was my path. So, uh, you know, basically for 27 years, I had never heard the word pastor. I had never heard the clear presentation of the gospel. Um, I was spiritually looking for an answer. And uh, I mean, honestly, it's, it's kind of hard to say, but I didn't think Jesus was an option. I grew up Roman Catholic. So I had a background of eight years of Catholic school. Um, some of my best experiences, best teachers and people that set me up for success in life was from that Catholic school. But I left there without a grasp of who Jesus really was. And so after eighth grade, I went to high school and, and it was pretty much, um, you know, girls, parties, football that continued through college. And then I went to graduate school at, at Columbia University. And I was, I was doing three master's degrees, two years in an effort to somehow, I don't know, just, grasp the meaning of life, grasp success. I just wanted to, somehow I thought that if I achieved enough, I would be happy if I got enough of this or enough of that, if I had enough pleasure, if I had enough um, experience, you know, all of those things, I thought that that would make me happy. And I found out that that was drastically, drastically wrong. And so while I was in graduate school, I started studying a lot of philosophies and, and all kinds of different things because I was just looking for an answer. I knew that deep down inside of me, there was truth. There was something that I needed. There was an answer out there. I just, I just knew that, but I had no idea how to get to it. And so I pretty much looked at every other option that was out there. Uh, trying to make myself happy through education, through achievement. I had done the sports thing. I won championships. I worked for the NFL. I got uh, three degrees from an Ivy League, you know, a master's degree. So, I mean, like, I did it all. And essentially, I had everything I wanted, but I was utterly miserable. Mm -hmm. And eventually, that led me to Christ. So, in that, 27 years old, 
I had never heard the word pastor. I had never heard a clear representation of the gospel. So I walk into Christ Church in Montclair, New Jersey on a Wednesday night. And um, the only thing I could say is God drew, drew me there. I'd walked my dog past the church for years. I had been the Sunday morning before I walked by, by the church. And I told my girlfriend at the time, who was the mother of my first child, that I was going to go there. And she literally just laughed at me. She was like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, she knew I was looking. She knew I was searching. But she also knew that I had, you know, tried everything else. And I went there on a Wednesday night and I literally stood in the back and tears rolled down my face. And I had no concept of the presence of God. I had no concept of God's manifestation, that God cared for me, that God loved me. I just knew that I needed to be there. And literally for about the next six, seven weeks, I went every Wednesday night, never went on a Sunday morning. I was still out there partying and drinking and trying to figure life out on my own. And the first Sunday morning that I ever went, I heard the gospel for the first time. And I heard the pastors tell me, he said, do you want to be forgiven? And I was like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I need to be forgiven for. He said, do you want to know God? I said, yeah, I want to, I want to know God because I've tried all this other stuff. It's, it's not working. You know, he asked, he said, if you want to be, uh, have your sins washed away. And I thought it was the craziest thing because I had no concept of with the goodness of God. And I figured that anybody that did anything wrong deserved punishment because they purposely did it. But in that moment, I said yes. And I gave my life to Christ. And I mean, my life was so radically changed. I went from angry to peaceful. I went from not being able to sleep to sleeping. I went from the most selfish person to the most giving person. And I began to realize that if God could do that in my life, that God could do that in anyone's life. And then on top of that, the funny thing is because I had no church background, I also had no church limitations. A lot of people come into church and they feel if I'm not a pastor, if I'm not a minister, if I'm not a leader, that I'm not allowed to do things. And I had none of that. I just read the Bible and started doing what it said. And in that, I, I started serving it. And, and I would share the gospel and people would get saved. I'd pray for people that were sick. they get healed. So I had no church limitations of what I was allowed to do or not to do. So essentially, I got to live the Bible in real time. It was like that childlike faith that he says that we that we need to have because you had no no limitations and no prior uh, formation. Let's say there was nothing to kind of undo, and you just took it. You just took him at it, at his word. <laughs> I would I would use the term. It was read ridiculously childlike. <laughs> That's awesome. So keep in mind, I've got three master's degrees from an Ivy League school. And it means nothing to me. Like nothing. Zero. It meant nothing. I, I won championships. I worked for the NFL. One of the ways I say it is I had everything I wanted but was miserable because there was a gap. There was an emptiness that nothing. And if, if I understood anything, it was that I did not have the ability to fill that gap. Yeah. And you know, Jack, I, I think because I, I didn't grow up in a Christian home either. So I mean, I went to Catholic school for the first uh, three years or so, but you know, I, I didn't grow up in a Christian home and I had, you know, a radical um, encounter with Jesus that was my before and after moment. But I, I really believe that, you know, he created us and he knew us. And it's like, um, I really believe that we are created with 
a space inside of us that nothing will ever fill. Yes. Except, except relationship with him. Yes. Not religion, not, you know, awards, not, uh, nothing, nothing will ever fill it except having that relationship with him. You know, um, if I could be honest about myself, I'm about one of the most intense human beings you'll ever meet. So when I say that I tried to fill that gap, I, I would bet everything I own that I tried to fill that gap more than 99% of human beings on planet Earth. And it didn't work. It was only until I came to the foot of the cross. And then when God changed me, like I, I, it was undeniable. It was, it was crazy. It was just like, it, it blew my mind mm -hmm. and it dwarfed anything that man had to offer. Yeah. And that's, you know, for anyone out there listening who hasn't experienced this relationship, it's um it's hard to describe but you know it's that overwhelming everlasting unconditional agape love that you know that that just will radically change the life of the person yeah and you you just use the word agape and so that's a word you know for instance that i, I would have never heard of before i came to the church and what that is, is agape is a Greek word, and it means that it's unconditional, undeserved. You have no right to it, but yet God gives it to you. And, and that's something that goes far beyond religion. It goes far beyond what anybody can do. It's, it's God yeah. literally just loving you despite anything you've ever done, anything you've ever said, anything that you ever thought about. It's about this incredible loving father that loves you no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I share, uh, when I share my testimony, Jack, I share that when, um, you know, I had gone down the wrong road in so many ways. I mean, I was a good person, but I had made wrong and bad choices in so many different times in so many ways. And when I, and I actually challenged him to show up in my life. And when I had that encounter, I always share, because it's so important, there was no record of wrongdoing. He did not meet me with condemnation or shame or guilt, but rather this overwhelming love that it was like this warm blanket was just draped over me. What would you say? Uh, you know, that's my experience also. I was so radically changed yeah. that it was undeniable. It was unlike anything that I, that I could experience in my own efforts. It's, I don't know, it, you know, I try to use stories about it. I, you know, I tell people, just imagine you owe 10, 10 billion dollars and you got like four dollars in your pocket and somebody comes by and just goes, okay, I'll pay the 10 billion dollars. And you're just like, you like, you can't even comprehend because you worked your whole life for the four dollars, you know, right. four dollars. You're like, I got four dollars, I got four dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, well, you really owe 10 billion. Yeah. And you're like, that's never going to happen. Yeah. But then there's this guy that goes, I got it. I got you. I got you. Yeah. And um, I think it's when you look at it, he created us with a plan and a purpose. And he wants us to live that plan and purpose. Yes. Amen. So that's the perfect segue, Jack, to. Why don't you share now what you're doing, what your what you have discovered, what God has shown you, your purpose to be here, and um, and how you're you're using that to basically expand His kingdom. Yeah, I think the easiest way to say it is that my, my greatest purpose is to help other people live their purpose, 
And a lot of times that, that sounds like so, you know, kind of abstract. But if you look at it, you have teachers that teach you your whole life up until you're finished school to live your purpose. You have people at your workplace uh, that, that are there to help you, you know, do a job and, and, and different things like that. You have coaches. As an athlete, you know, some of the greatest people in my life were coaches that, you know, they're there to help you fulfill your potential. And so one of the things that, that I love to do is help people understand and live who God created them to be and do what God created them to do. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures is Ephesians 3.20 where it says God will do above and beyond anything you've ever asked or thought about according to the power that is already at work within you. So you have the Holy Spirit within you. Uh, if you're a follower of Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit within you um, to empower you to do what God created you to do. And a lot of times people don't have that understanding. They, they think that they're small or limited. And like I said, I, I don't think I'm overly talented. I don't think I'm an amazing speaker. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm super great at anything. Um, but I know that God has called me to do great things, and I have to walk those out despite my what I would feel as insufficiencies, insecurities, and things like that. So I do that as a leader within the church. I've been serving at Christ Church uh, for how many years now? Um, 24 on staff, 27 total. Wow. And I've seen God do amazing things in the local church. I'm committed to the local church. I'm committed to my pastor, um, 27 years. Um, I'm also committed to the Great Commission, where God has really allowed me not only to write books, but travel uh, to many different countries, uh, Central America. I go there a lot. Um, India. I recently started going to Uganda. And, and all of these things. So I want to continue to multiply what God wants to do um, in me and through me. Yes, amen. And so you are also an author and a co-author. Can you um, expand a little on that? Tell us, um, well, tell us about God's team, your latest book. No, so a couple things. Um, like I said, I do help people write their books. Um, because it expands what God has called them to do. And then um, my, my latest book called God's Team, um, it's really about helping people understand that God has created them to do great things. So you may see yourself as super talented or you may see yourself, you know, as, well, I'm, I'm nobody special. But it's, it's not you, it's the God within you that can really do amazing things. So God's team is really about what we can do as a church, not only inside the walls of the church, but outside the walls of the church. Awesome. Awesome. So, Jack, anyone who wants to connect with you, who wants to get your books, how can they do that? A couple of things. All my books are on Amazon. So just go to Amazon.com. Um, also, anyone that wants to follow me can follow me on social media. It's at Jack W. Redmond, J-A-C-K-W-R-E-D-M-O-N-D. -E and you can learn about different uh, ministry things that I'm doing. Uh, you can also connect with me um, about whether mission trips or whatever I do. I um, have some upcoming trainings in New York City on evangelism. So a lot of what I do is empower people to do what God has created them to do. So, for instance, if you, if you want to uh, learn how to help people connect with Jesus, you come to my evangelism trainings. If you want to grab a book, God's Team, you know, you can do that. Um, and the uh, initial title of God's Team was actually called Beyond the Pulpit. And it really focused on how God wants to work outside of the church building, outside of the pulpit. Now, obviously, I believe in the pulpit. I've been preaching, you know, for over two decades, 25 years, somewhere in there. Um, and the pulpit's very powerful. But the main job of the pulpit is to equip the body of Christ to do the work of ministry outside of the walls of the church. So if, if you're kind of thinking about, okay, you know, how do I do this? You know, God's team is really kind of a, 
very it's a kind of a very simple understanding that'll help you understand how God wants to use you in a powerful way. Wow, that's awesome! Wow. Um, well, I'm thinking about the, the guy who walked his dog so many times past that church <laughs> and, and, and the guy speaking with me today. So listen, listen, uh, I used to walk the dog past the church. My, I had a Siberian Husky who was a runaway, so he kept running away. That's why he ended up with me. Uh, his name was Whitley. He was named after Keith Whitley, a dead country singer. Um, so <laughs> you could just imagine, uh, you know, where I was at, at that time. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, I got it, uh, drank himself to death. I named my dog after him. So uh, I'm living proof that God will use anybody. <laughs> Amen. Jack, um, if there's one message you could leave the Saved by Grace audience with today, what would that be? If I could leave people with one message, is that God created you with a plan and a purpose. Not only for you to know him personally, but for you to help others know Jesus in a personal way. You have people in your life that are disconnected from God. It's not God's will. In 1 Peter 3, 9, it says that God's will is that uh, no one shall perish, but everybody come to repentance. And a lot of times people don't see themselves as important or powerful or called. But the reality is that you have connections with people that your pastor doesn't. You have relationships with people that your pastor doesn't, which means you have their ear in a different way. So as you love and you serve people and you share the gospel with them and you share your life story with them, you have the ability to help change people's eternity. That's what God's team is about. God wants you. God needs you. He chooses to work in us and through us. And if you'll just be led by the Spirit and learn um, some very, very basic things on how you can help others to connect with God, you can change people's eternity. Wow. That's a great message, Jack. Thank you. Um, Jack, so I, I always, um, spend some time in prayer before the, um, having the interview with the guest and I ask the Lord to, um, share a scripture with me. And this is the scripture that, um, he shared with me for you, Daniel 1132, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as I hear your testimony and I see everything that, that you're doing, that, um, I just see how fitting this scripture is. You're carrying out great exploits to, um, just expand his kingdom and, and, and honor him and glorify him. And, you know, my prayer is that, um, he just continue to expand your tents and to glorify his name in your life and through your life. Yeah, you know, I just want to do God's will. Yeah. And I, I, I get to see, I get to go places that most people will never get to go. And I get to see things that most people will never get to see. But I also get to see God move. And in the same way that he'll move in Montclair or Rockaway, New Jersey or Clifton or Newark, he'll, I've watched God do such amazing things in the villages of India and, and with some of the poorest people in Uganda and Dominican Republic. And I mean, you could go all day. God is the same everywhere. And I just want to encourage everybody listening that if they will just seek God and ask God what they should do, God will use you to change people's lives. Yes, yes. Amen. Well, uh, Jack, I want to thank you for coming on, for sharing your beautiful testimony and, and uh, everything that you're doing. It's, uh, it's, a, it's been a real 
privilege and pleasure to have you on Saved by Grace. Um, just want to say thank you. I'm just like, I really, I love your testimony because um, he seeks us. You know, I thought that I was seeking him when I finally called out to him, but I later realized that he had been wooing and pursuing me. And um, so again, we encourage anyone, if you have any questions, if you're, if you're doubting, if you're wherever you are, we're here to help you on this walk. And um, you can reach out to us by contacting savedbygracepdcst at gmail.com. And in that, Jack, um, would you mind closing us out in a prayer? Yeah. Father, I thank you for everyone that listens to this message and, and to what you have done. Lord, I pray that you stir up a passion and a fire within everyone that watches and that listens that they understand they are called by you to help change lives. And not just now, but Lord, I, I pray that people know that they are called to help people change their eternal destination. And Lord, you need a big team to reach everybody. It's going to take everybody. So I pray that everybody that listens and watches will be filled with the passion to help love, serve, and help people connect to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you guys have heard Jack Redmond's testimony today, R-E-D-M-O-N-D. -E I strongly encourage you to go on Amazon and um, find his book or books, um, especially God's Team, and um, find him on social media, Jack Redmond. Jack, thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to Saved by Grace podcast. Do you have a God story that you'd like to share with the world? If so, please send us a message to savedbygracepdcst at gmail.com.